Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to be speaking to you this evening about my practice paper, which is titled Building a Strategic Human Resources Management Plan for Millennial Candidates and Workers in Virginia State Government. Now, to start off, um, I wanted to give some background about the age breakdown of the entire state workforce and a little bit of information specifically about um, the millennial generation. Now, as you can see here, um, in a very general sense, the age breakdown of Virginia's state government workforce very much increases over the, uh, the age range. The, um, the specific five-year age range that is the most prevalent in our state government is uh, the group of 55 to 60-year-old workers. Um, after that, it drops pretty precipitously. Um, but definitely most of the state workers are somewhere between about the 45 to 60 age range. Virginia has a unique problem. Um, in the sense that our state workforce is pretty backloaded towards our, um, our demographics of older workers. And it hasn't really figured out how to address um, the, uh, the lack of young people in our state workforce and how to both attract and retain more of those workers. As a little bit of background, stepping back from just our own state government, um, the demographic of people between the ages of 18 and 35 Millennials, as we've been referring to them throughout the course, and in general, in 2015, they became the largest age cohort in the workforce nationwide, um, surpassing baby boomers. Now, in Virginia specifically, the most recent census data that we have, which is from 2014, it, um, it only breaks down that age range between the ages of 20 and 34, but for that range of 20 to 34 year olds in Virginia, that is 21.3% of the population of the Commonwealth, so that excludes 18, 19, and 35 year olds in that group. Um, so knowing that that actual um, overall representation of millennials in the population of the Commonwealth as a whole is probably more like 22 or 23 percent, it's interesting to note that the millennial representation in the Virginia State employee workforce is only 20.7 percent as noted here. So we know um, that at the same time that millennial representation in the Virginia state government workforce is relatively low, that as we've discussed in this course and as other presenters have discussed this evening, about a quarter of state employees will be eligible to retire within the next five years. And the state as a whole doesn't really have a plan to figure out how to address that system with an infusion of younger workers. And most succession plans um, that exist out there in agencies deal with how to make it easier for older workers to stay in government, but not necessarily how to make it easier for younger workers to enter government. So we have a kind of a quandary right now where state agencies cannot solely depend on the retention of older, more experienced talent, and instead we have to have agency leaders and HR staff reaching out to new generations to build a more diverse workforce. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, the two interviews that I did for this um, were with two um, leaders in my office, the Office of the Governor. Um, who are intimately involved in uh, succession planning and workforce planning in general for the whole state government. Um, one of those is the governor's chief of staff, Paul Reagan. Um, and in this interview that I had with him, he uh, shared a little bit about what his view of some of the challenges of our state government workforce are, um, which is sort of reinforcing the point that HR managers um, haven't really recognized the fact that our workforce is aging and that we can't just retain these older workers, but that we actually need to bring in younger workers. And within that, how can state agencies figure out how to make their workplaces appear more attractive to young applicants? Um, and once they enter the state government, how can we make those workplaces more, um, more appealing, more, um, more supportive of the, the needs and desires of millennial workers? Um, but also kind of on the flip side, how can we instill some of the institutional knowledge and traditions of our state agencies in young people and give them some skills that they might traditionally be lacking. My other interview was with uh, uh, the governor's deputy chief of staff, Suzette Denslow, um, who discussed on a similar note that the biggest challenge facing our state agencies across the whole government is that we have not yet figured out how to attract young people into public service or government. Um, she kind of emphasized that we um, that we do need a balance, obviously, of, of older employees who understand government, but also younger employees who will bring in skills to be kind of entrepreneurs within their own agencies and kind of shake up how agencies are operating and bring in some of their own unique skills and talents. 
And she brought up one of the interesting points um, that I dive into more in my paper about the, uh, the challenges of, uh, of recruitment of young people is that most HR managers and hiring managers that she interacts with across state agencies, they tend to hire people who look like them. And oftentimes that tends to be older workers who are more experienced. Um, and uh, you know, she did go into details about obviously there might be um, some of that might break down over gender or even racial lines, but primarily in terms of age, it presents a problem where most hiring managers in state agencies are um, in an older generation, and they might not recognize the, um, the knowledge, skills, and other competencies, or the case ops um, that young people might bring to an agency, and might not necessarily pick a younger worker or someone who is inexperienced and maybe has the abilities to uh, to succeed in that job with a little bit of training and investment, um, but on the face might not appear as attractive as a candidate. So uh, one of the arguments that I um, that I made in my paper is uh, is that you know that there are a lot of examples out there, both in the federal government and in some various agencies at the state level, that are doing a good job of implementing programs that bring in younger people through either fellowship programs or um, or programs that bring young people directly from undergraduate or graduate school um, into kind of a temporary internship and then into more full-time employment. So we have isolated um, examples of some programs like this working for recruiting young people, but we really don't have any kind of integrated strategy for how the recruitment and attainment of younger workers fits into the strategic human capital plan of the state government. Um, and one of the challenges, too, I think that we haven't really gone into in the course yet, but is that we talk, obviously, now about millennials being that younger generation of, uh, of workers, because those are the youngest workers in the workforce now. But obviously, as millennials grow older, there will be a new generation of younger workers that comes in. Um, so just when the state adjusts to you know, how does it attack or attract and retain millennials, there'll be a whole new generation of people. Um, so my argument, and it's certainly one that um, was underscored to me through my interviews, seeing the lack of any sort of plan that we have for um, attracting younger workers, is that we need to do a better job of figuring out over a continuous basis how to bring more young people into state government. And I'll take any questions. Thank you. Brittany, yeah. Um, I know you talked about bringing younger, well, the millennials in to state government. How, I guess, does your organization, I guess, plan on doing or implementing that process? That is a great question. I, I think the, the short answer to that is that I don't think the organization has a plan for that right now. And when I say organization, I'll refer to kind of the whole state government. I don't think that there is a plan in place for that right now. I know they mentioned um, in both my interviews that they are going to be presenting to the governor in two weeks um, a plan on succession planning, but a lot of that focuses on older workers and how they intend to try to make it easier for them to stay in the workforce and trying to just ease the threat of impending retirement for a lot of older workers, but really there's minimal to no part of that plan that addresses how do you A, attract younger workers into government, and B, how do you take the young people that are in government and maybe give them more training to replace some of the retiring workers? So I don't think one exists really right now, um, which is, uh, I think, a big part of the problem. Uh, working in the government office, you know, after the 18 months is over, are you worried that, you know, you know, like all the young, you know, young people or just the diversity that's in the office now will all disappear? In terms of the governor? Yeah, like, just, you know, his term be over, and then, like, you know, whoever the next governor is, you know, all that will be, start changing in, in the, you know, governor's office. Well, I, so to that I can only speak really to what I've heard from other people who have worked in, in governor's administrations in the sense that those, I've heard that no matter who the governor is in office, that that specific office generally always has a pretty, a pretty large population of younger workers. Um, the one thing that I, I do think needs to be a, a more prominent part of succession planning and just human capital planning in general, whether it's the governor's office or other agencies, is trying to figure out how to 
make it easier for young people to just stay in government because as we've talked about throughout the course, the millennials tend to want to hop around from different jobs to learn things and to gain new experiences, but there's no reason they can't stay in government and do that, and either get more opportunities in their own agency or maybe switch to different agencies and remain public servants um, and still get the kind of um, job growth and new experiences they're looking for, but still remain as part of the state workforce. Um, and I think that there is the possibility that if that possibilities, or if that um, prospect is not addressed, that those, a lot of young people could just leave government. You've done a lot of research around millennials in Virginia, and have you had any interest or any desire to benchmark um, what other states, you know, we often compare ourselves with South Carolina and North Carolina in certain arenas. Have you looked to see what others are doing in terms of millennials in the workforce? I have not looked into that very, very deeply. I know in a little bit of my research for this paper, I looked into some of the, the federal work around this um, and dove into some of the programs that federal agencies have used. Um, I know there was, I forget the name of the agency, it was a transportation agency, but they had adopted a program in 2001 to um, employ some, not bonuses, but some sort of financial incentives for MBA graduates to proceed into their agency in terms of um, lower rates of, uh, of loan repayment and there was another incentive they had, but they had some sort of financial tools that made government service a lot more appealing to, um, to MBA graduates who would normally go to the private sector, but they really wanted to get people with those skills into the agency um, and they have been able to do that with a pretty successful rate. Um, so other states I'm not sure about, but that is a uh, there are a few programs federally that have been successful with that. So that said then, since you've interviewed Paul Reagan and Suzette Denslow, would you then volunteer to do a study on how to attract, recruit, and retain millennials for the Commonwealth of Virginia? Would you accept that charge? Certainly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think it's, um, it is, um, I should say it surprised me, but it also kind of didn't surprise me to to hear hear them underscore that the state really doesn't have a plan around the attraction or retention of millennials. But um, but I do think I mean even aside from the silver tsunami issue, I think it's a it's a challenge that um, and not just Virginia state government, but all public agencies I think are facing where um, government service doesn't seem as appealing to young people. It's something that I think they look at as, you know, you go into a government job and you stay there for generations and it, it might seem stodgy, um, but it doesn't have to be and there should be a lot more efforts around this. Thank you.